Blog Talk Radio. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Gypsy Poet Radio here on blogtalkradio.com front slash Gypsy Poet. I am the Gypsy Poet, and of course, I got the fabulous girl, George, with me on the air with two of uh, two of the most awesome guests so far that I've seen and heard so far. They are Daisy Duke and Jubilee Young. Everybody with me? Yeah. Hey. Hello. Uh, um, hello, hello. All righty. Oh, so where are you at? You in Texas, Jubilee? I am. I'm in Conroe, Texas at the moment. The Gypsy's in Texas, too. She's in San Antonio. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and and awesome. where are you at, Daisy? You're in Nashville? I'm in Nashville, Music City, USA. Oh, yeah, I love oh. Nashville. My favorite old town. stomping grounds. Uh-huh. So, so uh, how long have you been playing, Daisy? How long have you been playing music? Um, I guess I started when I was about uh, actually playing guitar. I started when I was thirteen, fourteen years old. Um, I was playing a tambourine and singing since two. Uh, my dad played guitar and sang, and and I uh, I had my little stage standing on an ottoman in front of his <laughs> chair where he played guitar, and and I came from a musical family. My mother was musical and. And actually, my my entire fam- family pretty much was, um, and is, and is. So Where are you from? Where are you from? from? I'm originally from Tennessee. I'm from um, actually a town between Nashville and Memphis. Oh, cool! And I've lived most of my adult life in uh, Nashville. Love and Jubilee, how about you? I know who your father is. Your father's about my age. I never knew I never knew him, but I knew Waylon and Chris and all those people in Nashville. Tell me about how you started playing at birth, I suppose. Well, not not quite. No, but um <laughs> you know, er, I think early on I probably my first experimentations were probably because my mom had a, a piano and I was just like, play with that some when I was really pretty little. Started dabbling a little with the guitar about ten. And I got I got more serious at about twelve. I felt like a late bloomer, but you know, it's just when I got really interested in it, it was about that age. So that's when I started it. Uh your your father is one of the old outlaws. He wrote like mm-hmm. what, uh Lonesome, Henri and Mean. That's one of one of Waylon's best songs. Yeah, no, he wrote that, and of course wrote Seven Bridges Road too, and uh-huh. uh, Steve Young was that's the old old feller. I, I and, found some uh, stuff on I found some stuff on YouTube about the uh, your your father and Guy Clark and Home Warren or something like that. Heart Warren, all right. Oh, that's Heart it, Warren, Heart right. Heart sure. Warren. And it's got them back in the day all drunk singing around the kitchen table. Yeah. <laughs> Town yeah. Sense, yeah. That's Great a fun, movie. fun, fun movie, yeah. Good stuff. So where did you two guys meet? You you and Daisy? The Gold Rush. The, the gold we don't rush have to go there if you don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> the Gold Rush. No, we're fine. We're fine with it. We go The back. Gold Rush in Nashville? That's where yeah. we met, yeah. Oh, cool. How long ago? Hmm. Ah, uh, ninety one. Wow, ninety or ninety one, yeah. Yeah, it was in there. Sidled that was a me. long time ago. At the bar, At yeah. Bar. You stayed yeah. friends all these years, huh? Lovers, Most. friends. <laughs> <laughs> Mostly. <laughs> makes me mad occasionally. I have to tell her to go away for a little while, but you know that's, that's how you do your. They do your good lifelong friends sometimes. It's just part of it, you know. Well, that's the way Gemini's are. They can't stay in one place very long. <laughs> no, well, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm a little Gemini for sure, but I don't know. It's, well, she's a Scorpio it. like me, so so I, I've been it, there. It, it, it's, it's not a good matchup, actually. No, it's not. It. It's not at all because Scorpios are are everything's this way, one way only, and, and Gemini's are oh whatever, and they're here and there and yeah. everywhere at the same time. My my partner Arizona Star was a Gemini, a double yeah. Gemini, and she was like five or six different personalities. Right. Uh, we were called uh, 
Jim and Pamela after Jim Morrison and his love uh, many times because of some yeah. of our some of our um, encounters that we had. It's, it's been really <laughs> crazy. A lot, in other words. And a lot of love, a lot of passion, a lot of friendship, a lot of good times for sure. A lot of being young and dumb and drunk too for me. Uh, you know. Yeah, and that too. <laughs> So where do you play, Jubilee? Do you play on the road, or you play with a band, or what you doing? A little both. I'm, I, I'm, I'm actually, you know, I grew up in Nashville, and I moved away in late '07 to take over a family property in eastern Oklahoma. So I'm actually still living up there now. I'm, I'm down in, in Conroe, just north of Houston, sort of doing a working vacation. My daughter's visiting my ex-in-laws and stuff for a couple of weeks so i came down here and i have a bunch of friends down here i've been touring down here a lot for about five years now and uh so i just kind of i've got about four shows in the area and oh just to kind of spread out over a couple of weeks i'm just kind of hanging out in between them how many kids you got just the one girl just one how many you have daisy I have one one daughter, and um, actually, he's her godfather. Oh, um, that's nice. Yeah, he was he was there the first one to hold her when she was born. He was in the delivery room. Well, that's real cool. Yeah, she did loves Did the two of you grow up with? The, did the two of you also um, have uh, have a lot of the same musical influences? Well, they're both from Nashville, so obviously, yes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, we both have, have a really strong like, rock background. Mm-hmm. As well as yeah. uh, the outlaw. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, the that outlaws themselves had a lot of rock influence themselves, mm-hmm. so, so that mm-hmm. kind of goes with yeah. it, right? Mm-hmm. Rockabilly and, and uh, uh, crickets. The uh, crickets is what what Whalen was in years ago. He was with yeah. Buddy Holly Buddy many Holly. years ago. Buddy Holly, yeah. Yes, Buddy Holly. Yes, to this day. So there's People a whole lot of rock it. influence in the outlaw movement. Mm-hmm. That's what it was. Was kind of Turning mm-hmm. Nashville into rock. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. Well, mm-hmm. his, and I've heard your uh, music, like and you're that. very rock, Julie. <laughs> yeah, well, some, yeah. I mean, you know, I got. I'm in a. I'm you're in a Gemini. You do all like, of it. I like all of it. You know, yeah. Every every album's been a little bit different, and I mean, I just sort of it's just a snapshot of what's going on with you at the time, and and you know, those are the songs you write, or the songs you do, and you do them the way you do them, and. You know, I, I mean, I'm just I'm a fan of musicians that evolve and experiment and try things and 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 you know change a little bit over the course of their careers and I think that's a good thing, really. Yeah, I think it's very good. I think you should write whatever is happening at the moment. I write a new song every week. Whatever's happening that week, I write, and I do it on stage that week. Sometimes I write in my sleep. I wake up and I write it. And, and then I take it to the club and I try to read it while I'm on stage. <laughs> I've done that with a little mini recorder by the bed, so I don't forget. No, I just wake up and write it down, scribble it down, and then then when I get to the club, they play the same thing every week, the band, and then there's everybody in the club gets up on stage with us. So there's 50 people on stage either playing instruments or singing back up or yelling or screaming, and they play the same song every week. Which is one of my songs, and then I add the new lyrics to it. Gotcha. <laughs> it keeps me from getting bored. Oh, we'll have to come out yeah. there and jam. So, yeah. what do you do, Daisy? How long have you been playing? Will you play at the clubs, or are you record, or what you doing? I've done both, but I'm not really doing so much of that right now. I'm, I'm still writing. Um, I still like to jam with people, uh, you know, if I get asked on stage or whatnot. If somebody wants me to record with them, I'd be happy to. Um, but um, I'm working right now assisting um, a foreign collector locating vintage guitars and purchasing vintage guitars. Oh, cool. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So doing a little bit of that. And, and mainly, you know, I've uh, kind of had to sidetrack a lot of things being a single mom. Mm-hmm. Um Mm. My ex husband and I, we were in a band together and um and we played out and we owned we were co owners with uh, uh some other producers in town uh for an audio rental company. So we were basically, you know, supplying the the studios to the studios, if you will. And yeah. so we did that and 
um, he uh, he worked with Brampton, and uh, so uh, I, I've just kind of um, had to do a lot of um, rearranging. Of, of things, you know, to be a mom and also, you know, helping out with different other family situations. But So, you know, uh, Frampton, huh? Peter Frampton? Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. You still keep in yeah. contact with him? I haven't seen Peter in a while, um, but uh, I'd love to. I, I heard he was uh, going to be playing the, the Ryman just recently, and I didn't get to make it. I was out of town. Well, let's see. But uh, I've got his number. <laughs> I'll call him up and tell him hi. Mm-hmm. Hi y'all. <laughs> so, what are some of the places that uh, that that you performed at? Um, for, this one's for Jubilee. Oh, well, you know, <clears throat> you mean down here in Texas? Mm-hmm. Yeah, or just Texas. wherever. Yeah. Well, let's let's talk about <clears throat> Texas a little bit since you, since you're already here. So, yes, yeah, talk a little yeah. bit about Texas. Mm-hmm. Well, I had I had never been here for before about oh five two thousand five and. Uh, Mm-hmm. I had a friend in Nashville that was originally from here, I think, um, from Stephenville. Mm-hmm. And he could not find anybody to come on this little five night stand at the in Kerrville that he booked mm-hmm. to play bass. Mm-hmm. And I didn't have anything else really to do. And, you know, there was money in it. And I said, you know, hell, I'll go. I'll do it. <clears throat> and that was the first time I came to Texas, and I immediately really liked it. And then in uh, late summer of '08, I, I I had moved to Muskogee by that point, and it was a lot more convenient. And I started coming down here and then some things. I think the first place I played, a, you know, like a, my own gig in Texas was at Under the Volcano in Houston, mm-hmm. and uh, and I've done the, the the Catfish Festival in Conroe a bunch of years. Like four out of the last five, and you know, Dosey Doe up here in the woodlands, and uh, you know, I've done some little sit in things in Austin at places like Mean Eyed Cat or Momo's, and it's just you know, whoever's whoever's booking, especially if they're all have you played the Austin City Limits yet? No, 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 I don't, I don't <laughs> think I've generated enough hype to be asked to do that yet, so <laughs> maybe someday you played anywhere in San Antonio, so she could. She she might know. Mm-hmm. I have I actually haven't been there yet. I uh, mm-hmm. my dad and I were supposed to play around there at one point a couple of years ago, and uh, he had to cancel that tour. So I, I came down and, and did a couple of the dates without him, but but they wanted to reschedule it, you know, with him. So I, I we didn't make it over there. So I have not played in San Antonio before. Mm-hmm. It's, it's oh, a yeah, I've been for, for David. Poor David's in Dallas. I mean, I'm mostly sort of doing that Tri City thing, and but really, a lot of it's been pretty Houston heavy. It tends to be in an area where I can find work, and I've met a lot of people, and it's just it's nice to come down here and have just you know hang out and play. Do you ever get to San Francisco or Berkeley? I was just out there last summer. My dad and I did a big tour out west last last summer, about this time. And uh, yes, we actually we actually pulled into San Francisco on on my, on the night of my birthday, and I was born there. So yeah, I absolutely have been. <laughs> just, yeah, that's just, where I, I'm in Berkeley. So this is my yeah, home played, area, is Berkeley, San Francisco. We played, yeah, we played a house concert in in Berkeley on that on that run too. So. And we you know, we actually scheduled a couple of days off in San Francisco just to hang out. Yeah. And I hadn't I had I hadn't been there since I was about ten. It was right after they won that first Super Bowl, and it uh-huh. was just you know the whole city was still buzzing over that. And I made my poor dad spend at that on that trip. I made him spend two days down on Fisherman's Wharf, just like any ten year old boy would, you know. <laughs> but we got to see a lot of the real city on that trip too, you know. Yeah, but, it's a uh, pretty town. No, I love it. I mean, I, I mean, you know, I, I, it, I think it definitely put its stamp on me. You know, when I came into the world, because I just, I just, I feel real comfortable there. It's just a nice, homey feeling. That city for me feels good. But you know, I need a couple of number one cuts to be before I could probably afford to live in it. You know. <laughs> Yeah, it's really expensive here. Have, have how many how many records have you made or CDs or mm-hmm. how many different have, ones have you made? I have I have officially four 
commercial releases so far. Mm. I didn't actually cut my first official album until I was well into my thirties. I think it, it came out in early '06. So I uh, before that I was just sort of surviving and wrestling demons and growing up and playing playing in garage bands and you know I just didn't really have my act together enough to really take a, a good run at launching a, a music career but you know I'm 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 having having a good time with it now and I'm doing what I can I mean I'm I'm actually also a single dad so I'm not free to just go live on the road you know how old is your kid. Seven. Just turned seven in May. Seven. I got a grandkid that's going to be seven. <laughs> in, in August, my grandson will be seven, and the granddaughter will be four. So, right so my on. daughter is like 36. She's about your age. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You're 36, that's, right? That's about really. right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, I was like 36 that. once. I, I can say that for sure. I, I was 36 at one time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So was I. Me too. I was too. <laughs> yeah. We're in our 40s now. But don't tell anybody. Well, I'm 68, so I'm almost your father's age. I think he's a couple of years older than me. He'll be 71 in about two weeks. Okay, so he's like, uh, he's two years older than me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'll be 69 as, this year. Mm-hmm. Right. As, as songwriters, I wanted to ask, um, have there been any artists that have recorded your music, or do you record your own? I, to my knowledge, I've never had any mm-hmm. cuts. You know, and that, but mm-hmm. I haven't really, it's not really what I do with it. I mean, I don't seek them out. You know, I mean, I'm just putting mm-hmm. out records, and people mm-hmm. that enjoy them, enjoy them, and, and then, you know, it allows me. Uh, got and play some, and and uh, you know, I mean, if 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 I can advance that in some way a little bit, that'd be okay with me. But I mean, I'm not even, I'm not sure I want to be famous, really. You know, I'm just, I just I don't think it was something that ever much appealed to me in a way. You know, I think my dad was very much the same way too. But mm-hmm. I come by it pretty. Quickly. Uh, that's a nice. He would be better at that than I would. Um, I'm, I'm way too private. He likes the spotlight a lot better. Mm. Well, I like playing music for people. I don't know if I like the the, the spotlight, especially off the stage, you know. But, you know, I mean, you look at what some of these mm-hmm. really famous people go through, and you're just like, fuck that. You know? Yeah, you can't even go to the store without people no. hounding you and taking pictures of you and bothering your kids, so maybe right. it's cool to stay just a little underground so you can still play yeah. but not have people hassle you. Yeah, you yeah, I know mean, what? I think that's no, not... Go ahead, I'm sorry. Oh, no, I'm sorry. You go ahead first. <laughs> oh, well, I, was, I mean, I just... I, you know, if you want to make a living playing music, you can make a comfortable living playing music and absolutely not be a household name. It's entirely possible, and, and you know, for me, that's that's really all I'm, I'm after. I you know, just do what I do and survive doing it. And you know, getting rich would be nice, but it comes with its own set of problems too. So, you know, <laughs> well, whatever. Yeah, it's always a good thing. I think honestly, the the, the best people and my minus performers are the ones that just that that just do it for the love of doing it. You know, everything else everything else is just uh, is just bliss and glam and. You know, there's. I don't know if there's any substance to that anymore, especially since I do this radio well, program anyway. <laughs> I mean, exactly. you know, especially in an area like Texas where people really do like live music. I mean, of course, you run into situations mm-hmm. where, you know, a lot of the general public, oftentimes, sorry, general public, I'm about to slam you. Um, you know, mm-hmm. doesn't. I mean, most people are just. It's, it doesn't occur to them the difference between seeing something that's great and something that's mediocre. Mm-hmm. A lot of it sounds the same mm-hmm. to them. So, I mean, you know, and if you're not doing it because you love it, you're doing it wrong. Right, right. Fortunately, music and entertainment and all that stuff has become, like, Mm -hmm. the gateway for a lot of people who are really only interested in ego glorification and fame. Mm -hmm. And they're really, Mm -hmm. their passion is not music. It's attention and Mm -hmm. fame and money. And it does a disservice to quality music. Mm -hmm. And it it shoves a lot of artists that 
you know, 20, 30 years ago would have been getting, you know, the labels behind them and the money, and they would have worked with them, and they would have actually had talent, and they would have put out good music. And it's, they're just shoveling crap out the door as fast as they can shovel it, and it's just, there's nothing significant about it. Mm-hmm. It's noise. Yeah. Yeah. Noise. I mean, you know, when I was younger, I could think of songs that, that that if I hear them now from 20, 30 years ago, they take me back in that moment, and there's a, an emotion and a memory attached to it. And I can't think of a single song I've heard in the last 15 years that's done that I think in the future I'm going to hear that song and go, oh, yeah. Well, there's, there's a couple like memory. R.E.M. doing Losing My Religion <laughs> or, yeah. or some of Nirvana <laughs> stuff. And, uh, that, was, that was 15 That was over 15 years, years ago? ago? Yeah, like, oh, well, like that was night. when my daughter would turn me on to those, and she's old now, yeah. so I guess it was longer than that. But I haven't heard anything since REM or Green Day no. or Nirvana no. that's actually rang my bell. No, not really. I mean, now you get Nickelback and whoever I'm won American Idol last. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and, 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 yeah, I'm talking about the pop, you know, mainstream. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm into is pop. I'm into rock and roll pop. But then hip hop right. and, and rap took it over, and I'm not into that at all. You know, I like yeah. music. And I so, so in that. hopefully it gets back around to music and melodies and, and, and lyrics mm-hmm. that yeah. say something. I think well, it's coming no, I, back I, around. I, 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 I got to def- gotta defend the rap a little bit as far as lyrics mm-hmm. say something because, in a lot of ways, that musical form on you know, a pop commercial mainstream level is probably the only one left that sometimes does have lyrics that actually say something of some sort of social mm-hmm. importance. And there's not any of that going on in the R&B and pop and, and mainstream country much at all. You know? Well, I'm, I've, so. I've never been into country, so I don't know about that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, now, you know, one of the strength, of it, you know, I've been like, playing outright rock and roll. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, his his uh, electric sets are, were really awesome. He used to really rock it out in his twenties. Yeah, I'm I'm definitely a rock and roller, really. I mean, you know, and all of it. My 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 musical journey was sort of a microcosm of rock and roll because when I you know my early interests were things like my mom's forty five collection from the sixties, and it was like you know Elvis and Jerry Lee. And yeah, I love Rick. Jerry Lee Lewis. Right. Orbison, it was stuff like that. Plus, you know, Chuck James Berry. Brown, I Chuck Berry, the Isleys, you know, it was all these. Richard. <laughs> Little Richard. Was yeah. so, I mean, and then from there, I, I discovered the LP collection, and I found Highway 61 Revisited, Sergeant Peppers, Israeli Gears from Cream. Oh yeah. And, and that led me into the Beatles uh, the in a big way. And Dylan and and Hendrix was a big big mm-hmm. one. And then a little later, Dire Straits was one of my all time favorites. I love Martin Knopfler. Martin Knopfler. Um, yeah. And Pink Floyd. I'm a huge. I'm a Floyd head from hell. I love me some Pink Floyd. Yeah, they're um, great. And and you know, all peppered to I said, of course, I'm growing up in this rich country, outlaw country, bluegrass. B- blues environment too, and I've got all these. Episodes. I mean, I just, I, I do love it all, and you know, I am bad about not really, you know, being able to pick a pick a genre and stick with it like a good boy. But it's just because it, it's <laughs> all good. I like all of it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, I think, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, both of us really uh, our roots go back mm-hmm. to like a a folk type of writing. Mm-hmm. I think best describes. Our writing style, um, although we we love all the other genres mm-hmm. and and have done them, wouldn't you think, Jubilee? More of a folk, yeah, if you had to put a label on it. I don't, you know, I don't know, I don't know how to describe me. That's that's the problem, you know. Really, is that I don't know. I mean, I mean, you know, like I say, it's, it's just I, I've, I've been influenced by it all. I mean, there's certainly folk in there, but. I, I, I'm afraid if I call myself a folk singer, it, it, it's a misrepresentation because there's a lot of rock and roll and blues and country and stuff sure. in there, too. So. Sure. I think we had the pigeon. Well, singer songwriter like kind of fits, except you have a band. I think singer songwriter is usually just one guitar and a voice. Yeah. 
Well, I, I perform. I perform both ways. I, I do. I do solo shows as well as some band shows. I mean, most, honestly, most of the time it's usually just me. But, but uh, you know, when I get a get a show where I can, you know, put a band together, I, I do enjoy that because it's it, it was just always something I did. You know, all the way up into my thirties was have some sort of little garage band just. To, mess around with or something and well it's, it's more fun, fun to yeah. play with other people than just by yourself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Baby, do you have anything to add to that? Well just, you know, Jubilee is such a uh excellent songwriter. I don't know how much of uh of his stuff that you've heard. He's just uh mm-hmm. uh just I don't think I, I don't think he would have to ever write another song, and and every one that he's got, you know, as, up to now is a, is a hit in my opinion. And that's being a songwriter, and I'm very critical of of, of myself and and other songwriters, you know. And and he just he really has that something special. Uh, he always has, and he's a one man band, you know. He can pull the whole thing off with just him and a guitar, and sometimes a harmonica, and um. And he's just got such a powerful, um, soulful mm-hmm. voice mm-hmm. that, yeah. you know, when you back that with the the lyrics that that he's just, you know, noted for, and, and Nashville respects, you know, uh, his father's work, but, you know, he's made his own niche and in his own right, you know, he really does shine. And um, uh, he's really a brilliant songwriter from melodies and harmonies and, and like I said, we're we're wordy people, you know. He really, really has something to say in his music. Takes you there. Um, he makes you feel. And I think that's what's really important uh, in any song is to, you know, take the person there, tell them a story, uh, and make them feel something. And he always does. He can make you cry. He can put the chills on you. All that good stuff. Mm. I can see that. And I love no. singing with him. We Go have beautiful on. harmonies. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he loves this. <laughs> so you guys have sang together and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Love, love mm-hmm. to sing with him. I used to go over. At one point, we lived when we were together. We lived one street apart, and so you know, go over there. Not and, recommended, guys. Not recommended. <laughs> <laughs> go over and go, you know, here play this with me or sing this with me and you know, here here pick up your guitar and you know, and just uh you know, hey play a song for me, let me hear what you've played. Uh what you what you're writing today. Um he's he's very inspiring and, and uh and can just do anything. Um you know, I'm just um uh, have always been amazed at um uh, the talent that he has. And um you know, I think a lot of people, if they uh, listen up, they're going to find out the same thing. And, and and his dad, when he performs with his dad, is just, you know, something about the families and harmonies. When, when you have a family member, it just it's there. You know what the other person's going to do. It, you know them. Um, and, and their voices blend so well together, just beautifully. So I love to hear uh, Steve and Jubilee sing together and perform together. That's really an, a, a great experience too. Like the and his father album. is 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 Steve Young, right? Correct. Yes. Okay. I don't yep. think we ever mentioned his name. We keep talking about when we hadn't mentioned his name. <laughs> your daddy. Your daddy. <laughs> <laughs> Just daddy. Yeah. We're all look for daddy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Who was your daddy, uh, 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 Daisy? Did we know him? No, um, my dad is uh, very musical, but he was a horse trainer. Oh, horse and, um, trainer. That's cool. <laughs> yeah, I grew up on a 200-acre horse ranch, and, and so around all the horses and, and uh, cowboy. Uh, oh, yeah. Cowboy way. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so um, he was killed in a car accident a few years ago, and I wrote a song uh, called Cowboy Angel uh, after he was killed, and you know, uh, that's a special one to me. And I uh, think about maybe doing something with that someday. I'm not sure if I will or not, but uh, but he was definitely the inspiration for that song and, and uh, for a lot of my love of music because I really loved, you know, um, listening to him play guitar and sing. And I grew up on all the old uh, 
Hank Williams uh, Sr. and mm-hmm. and all the the good old country stuff. Johnny Cash. He did. A, you know, I, I was singing Folsom Prison Blues when I was three, <laughs> you know? oh and all these old love songs and crying and not knowing why. A lot of train songs and Merle Haggard and and that sort of thing. Oh, that's. So he brought me up. Well, he brought me up right. No, that's good. Well, it was good to talking to you, Daisy yeah. and, and Juba. We'll yeah. we'll look you up on the web. You're both yeah. on Facebook, yeah. so we can find you yeah. there. And I'll have the video up by uh, Tuesday of you guys yeah. of this show. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Oh, say Absolutely. goodbye, uh, everybody. It's it's yes. that time. Uh, yes. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs> thank you for having <laughs> Thank you so Thank much. You and guys, please much. Ch- oh, not a problem. Please check out Jubilee Young and Daisy Duke on, on Facebook and on the web anywhere you possibly can. They have such great material and awesome stories to tell and I hope that you do look them up. They are amazing. They're they're wild, they're crazy, they have some great posts on their pages. Be sure to check them out uh, sometime later this week and immediately after the show. So this is the Gypsy Poet signing off saying with Girl George saying Adio for now. <laughs> Do you ever see the morning dew and think of all the tears I've cried for you? Or do you turn and look? The other way As it slowly melts In sunlight's face When the wind blows Gently through the trees Does it bring back All the memories Like a breath that dances On your skin The other way The other way I know I'm never better than when I am with you When I see myself the way you look at me And I can laugh and cry and live and die forever in your home As my days slip As my days slip away Without me When the moon is full and lights the sky Do you feel me loving you tonight? Or do you only see the end of day as you turn me back and walk away? When you think of love and living free, does it bring to mind you love me? Or do you write it off as fantasy and say some things were good? I know I'm never better than when I'm with you When I see myself the way you look at me And I could laugh and cry and live and die forever in your arms As my days slip
As my days slip away Oceans run deep 